I'm going to elaborate a little bit uh, the link uh, between ballistic missiles and the perception during 1990s that they were the prime delivery vehicles uh, for weapons of mass destruction. In fact, the ballistic missiles at the period were seen as problematic, destabilizing weapon systems. Number one complication was their very high speed, and they left very little warning time to the defenders, and they put a lot of pressure on the decision makers, what we call the finger on trigger situation during crises. So that was seen as very problematic from a crisis and escalation management point of view. On top of that, because they flew so fast and they uh, undertook part of their journey through space because of their ballistic trajectory, the existing air defense systems were largely ineffective in shooting down ballistic missiles. So it was a weapon category that left very little reaction time to also leave uh, very uh, little possibilities of defending against, and on top of it, to make the matters worse, they were also very difficult to locate and eliminate before they were launched, because in most cases, there, those were the mobile launchers from which uh, they were deployed, and it was uh, quite difficult to locate and eliminate them before they launched their missiles. And on the downside for ballistic missiles, of course, they were, in the 1990s, the generation, the first generation that we are talking at the period, were pretty inaccurate, meaning they were better for striking population centers, large areas, or worse, they were effective when they were mated with weapons of mass destruction warheads. So this has unavoidably led to this direct association with ballistic missiles on the one hand and weapons of mass destruction uh, that they were intended to carry on the other. And there was great concern in the international community because all states in possession of weapons of mass destruction also deploy ballistic missiles. And most states developing ballistic missile capability at the time were also seeking uh, weapons of mass destruction. So this, this close association between the two provided the main impetus behind international communities' efforts to curtail, to keep under control ballistic missile proliferation. Now, coming a, a second question, which is uh, quite important in this respect, why the Hcock focus concentration on ballistic missiles rather than other types of missiles, such as cruise missiles at the time? Those are uh, basically uh, unlike the ballistic missiles that follow a trajectory, uh, a ballistic trajectory that takes them into space. Cruise missiles were flying closer to Earth and taking advantage of the curvature of the Earth and uh, the, the geographic features to, to hide themselves. Uh, they were much slower, but nonetheless quite difficult to detect. Why they were not included? Well, number one difficulty was probably definitional because several dozens of countries at the time deployed anti-ship missiles which were primarily cruise missiles in terms of the technologies they employed, even though they targeted ships. So, I mean, any arrangement to include cruise missiles would uh, be uh, hitting into the, the stumbling block of, of uh, accommodating those anti-ship missiles, and that was not easy at the time. And a lot of the uh, programs of uh, direct uh, concern uh, were around ballistic missiles in the proliferating countries at the time, and their cruise missile programs followed on a little bit later in time frame, some 10, 15 years later. So the, the, the consensus that was reached at the time, the, the middle ground that could be found was to focus on ballistic missiles rather than cruise missiles, even though there were several calls to include them in HCOC uh, scope as well at the time. This was this did not find acceptance at the time. <laughs>